up, guys? I'd like to, I'd like to welcome everyone to the Fault Lounge. Thanks for coming out. Uh, I just wanted to start off. Oh no. Am I wearing my Fault shirt again? Son of a bitch. Oh man. Don't you hate it when you wear the wrong Martini Lounge shirt to the wrong Martini Lounge? God, that happens to me all the time. Um, luckily, this is only the shirt before the shirt. Okay, so where were we? Welcome to... Oh no. This guy's batting over too, I'll tell you that much. Wow. I feel silly. Okay, luckily... This is the shirt before the shirt before the shirt. Okay, now we're ready for takeoff. Okay, got my notes. Welcome to the sky guy, everyone. Welcome to the sky guy. Um, I wanted to start off by saying that I think Sky would be very smart to charge a $20 cover downstairs because by the time the elevator gets to the top and the bar is closing... <laughs> now I wanted to start off by telling you guys a little dream, horrible dream I had last night. Uh, I was in a dark place uh, and it was really loud. And there were lights flashing and there were these clowns dancing all around me. Then I realized I wasn't dreaming, I was actually at Entourage. Wow. Speaking of uh, Entourage and Sky and Flaunt, there are always DJs at all these places, I love DJs. Uh, but I always hear those DJ promos on the radio. Like, the little techno beat behind it, and it's just like, Come on down to Club 908 Red T-Shirt Contest. That type of shit. I was thinking, those beats are so damn cool, it doesn't matter what you say during the promo, it'll sound cool. For example, let's take a topic, let's, let's do a DJ promo about shit, pure shit, okay? Give me that beat, Jeff. Come on down to club shit stay, we got DJ skin marks playing in the poopiest flavors. <laughs> now let's take another topic. Let's say infant babies, all right? Let's do a DJ promo about infant children. Look at that beat again. It's baby night at the prom. First 50 infants getting free. We got the Pedialyte girls giving out free shots of baby formula. <laughs> See what I mean? No matter what you talk about, that shit sounds cool. Anyways, I know we've been, we've been real funny lately with our antics, uh, but I'd like to get serious for just one second. Uh, as you must you know, I've been uh, single for quite some time. It might have something to do with the antics uh, just earlier. But uh, what I'm trying to say is I've been getting really lonely, and... <laughs> I guess what I'm trying to say is I just want to find a woman that I can spend the rest of my life with. <laughs> you know, bro, I've been with you for a long time. I'm looking for you. I'm going to up in some way. I just, I don't know what to say. I just, I'm going to keep looking until I find you. I'm not going to give up. Not like that. No way. I guess what I'm trying to say is, yo, I'm looking for a girl that I can bring home to mom and dad, you know? I welcome her with open arms. You know what I'm saying? That type of girl you can make to family barbecues. And everyone loves her right away. And she makes that world famous potato salad. <laughs> and then one time, my girl won't be able to make it to a family barbecue. And they'll ask me, Joe, my salad yet? And I'll be like, sorry, she couldn't make it. But don't worry, she'll be making that potato salad next time. <laughs> I don't know, I guess. What I'm trying to say is, I'm sick of getting my dick sucked. I'm sick of leaving my balls on girls' faces. I'm sick of skull fucking girls. I'm sick of the mushroom stamps. I'm sick of all of that. I don't know. I guess what I'm saying is, I just want to find a girl 
I wanna find a girl who can give me in bed and I can fart. And I can hold her under the covers and she'll pass out. And I'll shake her, I'll shake her and I'll say, honey, you okay? You okay, baby? And then she'll finally come to wake up and we'll both laugh about it. And then I'll tell her, yo, bitch, go make me that potato salad now. That's what I want. Got the music. Fuck that. I love being single. I love it. Thank you, brother. Talk about uh, a subject very close to home with you. It's about me and my dad. Now, uh, me and my dad, like all fathers and sons, we get into our arguments, okay? But uh, every time me and my dad get into an argument, it doesn't matter what we're talking about, okay? No matter what, you will always think I'm insulting his intelligence, okay? And then anger turns into absurdity, and absurdity just turns into, I don't know what the hell. For example, he came up to me and he said, Joey, how many dollars you guys charge for your funny shows? I said, I'm sorry, uh, Dad, for uh, funny, funny shows, what was that? Joey, listen to Daddy. Daddy said, how many dollars you guys charge for your funny shows? I said, Dad, we're charging seven bucks, okay? We don't want to get too overpriced. So we kept it at seven, and we think that works best. So then he comes at me with, Joey, daddy is a salesman. Daddy told you to charge $20, okay? Daddy was a salesman, I'm not stupid. $20, you guys, is funny guys. So I said, Dad, we're charging seven, and that's that, okay? We're charging seven dollars, and that's it. Boy, Dad did not like that one. He came at me, looked me square in the eye with this rapist face, and he said, Joey, you think you're fucking smarter than me? Look at daddy, you think you're fucking smarter than daddy. You think you're fucking smarter than daddy now? Okay. I said, Dad. I said, Dad, I don't think I'm smarter than you. When, in retrospect, the Portuguese schooling went to what? About the fourth grade? So of course I'm smarter than you. Well, you can't say that to an angry reporting. You can't, because you will get your ass beat. <laughs> to end things off tonight, I'd like to talk about a couple of sexcapades I had recently. I usually don't air this out to the public, but what the hell, right? I ran out of material. Uh, first off, this happens to me very often. Right after sex, I don't want anyone in that area. It's tender, it's tired, it wants to go to sleep. <laughs> So, this guy knows what I'm talking about. I just, if it was up to me, I would mark it off with yellow caution tape. But we can't do that as humans. Okay? So when a girl creeps toward there after sex, it gets awkward because I turn into a mother yelling at her child. I say, hey, don't touch it. What did I say? What did I say? What did I say? Don't. Touch it. No. No. Touch it again. See what happens. Touch it again. See what happens. You know what? You know what? I'm going to put it away, and when you can learn how to use it, I'll take it out again. Thank you. Thank you. God. This is my last joke, I swear. Um, I was propositioned recently, something that I've never been propositioned before. I was propositioned for anal sex. I know, that's our subject. And uh, I know what you're thinking, Joe, that's gross. But you know what? The girl, she came up to me very cute about it. Very sweet, very coy, very poetically said, Joe, throw it in my ass. So I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm thinking two things. One, anal sex is quite literally a shitty idea. And two, I can barely work a vagina, and now you're throwing your asshole at me? It's ridiculous. So anyways, I decided, you know, it's risky, it's unhealthy, it's gross. Hell, let's give it a shot, right? So I'm easing it in there, inch by inch. Or, in my particular case, I'm easing it in there, centimeter by centimeter. And finally, there we are. Systems go, all aboard the Anal Express. Poop, poop. 
So there I am, okay? Going in and out, in and out, and suddenly she throws a curveball at me. She says, more. More, more. So I'm looking at this asshole thing, and there is no possible way I can fit more in there. So I give it a shot, I start tucking my balls in. I start tucking my balls, I'm still an asshole, right? So there I am, with my dick in my balls in this girl's asshole. I've always wanted to say that. I've always wanted to say that. And she turns around and says, You're doing it all wrong. So I, I looked her right in the eye, very seriously said, Hey, stop being so anal about it. That's what I'm